Good, happy Monday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, man shot by son returns fire and kills him, investigators say. A Dover man was shot and injured Saturday by his son, but he returned fire and wounded his son, who later died, investigators said. The Attorney General's office said Breton Davis, 55, died of a shotgun wound, and his death was ruled a homicide. His body was found Saturday at his home at 92 Three Rivers Road. Officials said the investigation is in its early stages, but it appears that Breton Davis shot his father, John Davis, 76, several times. John Davis managed to retrieve a shotgun and returned fire, investigators said. John Davis then left the home and called 911. Investigators said no one else was in the Davis home during the shooting. They said Breton Davis has a history of mental health issues. No charges have been filed. Officials asked anyone with information to contact the Dover Police Department at 603-742-4646. Tractor trailer leaks a hundred gallons of diesel fuel onto New Hampshire I-89 after hitting guardrail. A tractor trailer leaked about a hundred gallons of diesel fuel onto the northbound side of I-89 after striking a guardrail and jackknifing. The 2015 Fiat liner and 53-foot box trailer registered to Nationwide Express Transportation out of Hallelujah, Florida, was operated by Yelsey Rodriguez, 27 of Hollandale Beach, Florida. The highway was reduced to one lane of travel for over three hours to facilitate cleanup, which was supervised by the Department of Environmental Services. No one was injured in the crash, police said. Rodriguez was issued citation for driving too fast for the existing road conditions and for, commer for a commercial vehicle logbook violation. The crash is under investigation by the New Hampshire State Police Trooper D. Conquered by Trooper Anthony Catbridge. Anyone with information regarding this incident is asked to contact Trooper Catbridge at 603-271-1111. Trump um, energizes CIA in war of words over Russian election hacking. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, joins us now with more on this. And Brian, Congress calling for a big investigation into this matter with the Russian hacking. What do we know right now? Well, first of all, we heard from the Russians this morning. They call the uh, CIA assessment unfounded, unprofessional, unqualified. But the fact is the Russians did target both Republicans and Democrats during the election. That's according to U.S. and European intelligence officials, as well as members of Congress from both sides of the aisle. 
the Russians were much more successful, however, with the Democrats than the Republicans, which had a better cybersecurity operation. The Russians got into two computers connected to the Republicans, a consultant and a local party, but they did not get to the main computer at the RNC. The big question motive here, were the Russians trying to help Trump win? Well, in this case, other intelligence agencies tell us they don't agree with the CIA. They say what they are now analyzing is that the Russians thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. They sought to weaken her once she was elected. It wasn't so much about going after Trump and getting him elected, according to these officials. All right. Interesting. Brian Ross, as always, thank you so yes. much. Okay. And there you go on that report. Dow notches 15th record close since election. Treasury yields rise ahead of Fed meeting. Stocks closed mostly lower on Monday despite oil prices soaring as Treasury yields spiked ahead of a key Federal Reserve's meeting. Terminally ill Boy dies in Santa's arms. Let's take a listen to this video from HLN. I came up to him first and, and said, what's this I hear that you think you're going to miss Christmas? And he, he just kind of nodded his head at me. And um, I says, no way. The old already had your present already made up for you, and here it is. And I handed him the present, mm -hmm. and he was so weak. He had a hard time um, opening it up, and I, uh, I helped him with it. And he saw what it was and put a smile on his face. And then he kind of just put his hand, hands down and laid back in the pillow and then looked at me. He said, they say I'm dying. And I said, well, will you do me a favor? And he goes, sure. I said, when you get to those pearly gates, you just tell him you never stand as number one elf. And I, I guarantee you, he'll open up the gates for you. He says, I am? You're sure you are. And he just kind of leaned forward, gave me a big hug. And as I looked down at him, he looked up at me with those fading eyes. Santa, can you help me? And uh, he passed before I could say anything. So I got on to it and uh, looked over their parents, and the mother started screaming, and like, no, no, not yet. And she came over. I handed the child to her, and I took off. Um, yeah. I, uh, there's a big fat boy running down the aisle, uh, the, uh, the uh, aisle lay there and crying his off, you know. Okay, and there you go on that report. And that is it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday night. Good night, everyone. Bye.